All right, fifth graders, this is Mr. Combs, and we are going to get rolling on our final day for the week of May 18th, and we're going to do some of my favorite stuff, which is multiplication and division. So without any further ado, here we go, and we will get working. So for question number one, find the product, show your work below. I'm going to set it up so I have 26 times 1.9, okay? I'm going to put 26 on top and 1.9 um, on the bottom. And then I'm going to start multiplying out from my smallest place value, starting in that tenths with my 9. So I know that 9 times 6 gives me 54. Leave that 4. Regroup the 5. 9 times 2 okay, is 18 plus 5 is going to give me 23. I'm just going to write that as 23 right there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a zero underneath that four because I'm moving up a place value now. We need to hold that place value. One times six is going to give me six. One times two is going to give me two. And then now I am simply going to add this stuff up. Okay, so I have four plus zero to give me four. Three plus six to give me nine. Two plus two to give me four. Four. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to count up the number of place values that I have present um, behind my decimal point. In each one of these factors, I see 26 doesn't have a decimal point. It has nothing behind that. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this 1.9. I'm going to underline that 9. I have one place value to the right of my decimal point. So what that means is I'm going to start from the very back in my um, final answer in my products. And I'm going to go one place value forward. And so my answer is going to be 49.4 for that one, okay? What I am going to do now is we're going to look at finding the quotient and showing our work before, or showing our work before. We're always going to do our work before, but we're going to show our work below, excuse me, okay? And so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to write this out um, doing standard algorithm, but I'm actually going to rewrite this so I can think about making this divisor this number I'm dividing by a whole number. So what I'm gonna do is I'm still gonna write out 1.6, then I have 0 0.08, okay? In order to make that whole, or that divisor, that 0 0.08, a whole number, I'm gonna have to move my decimal point two places to the right, okay? When I move that decimal point two places to the right, what it's gonna give me is gonna be eight, okay? And then I'm going to be dividing by a number that has also moved this decimal point two places to the right um, from our uh, dividend, right? So we're going to go one place value. I'm going to add a zero. I'm going to go another place value. And then that decimal point now is going to be at the end of that zero. So I'm going to really essentially be thinking about 160 divided by eight. Okay, so 1.6 is equal to 160 hundredths divided by 8 hundredths. So I'm going to rewrite that up here. I have 160 hundredths divided by 8 hundredths. What I'm doing now is I'm going to think about 8 can't go into 1. It can go into 16. It's going to go into 16 two times. 8 times 2 gives me 16. 16 minus 16 gives me zero, that zero drops down. He's still important, he still matters. Okay, now we're gonna think about how many times eight goes into zero. I know that eight goes into zero, zero times. Eight times zero gives me zero. Zero minus zero gives me zero. So my answer is going to be 20, okay? And essentially the way we thought about that is we moved our decimal point over, so that was eight um, so that was a whole number, right? It still represents that eight hundredths. We moved it two place values over to the right. Same thing in our uh, div dividend, excuse me, of one and six tenths. Move that two place values over. 1.6 is equal to 160 hundredths. And then we just did that division to give us 20, okay? Next one. Um, question number three. When you solve 1.2 divided by two tenths, will the quotient be greater than or less than the dividend 1.2? Okay, justify your response. 
the way we're going to justify our response is we are simply going to um, solve this. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to write it out. 1.2 divided by 2 tenths. Okay. The first thing I'm going to think about is I'm going to rewrite this. So my divisor is a whole number. In order to do that, I would move my place value uh, or my decimal point one place value over. Okay. So it's going to go one place value over. Okay. Two tenths right here. This is still representing that two tenths. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing up here. I'm going to move that place or that decimal point one place value over since I did that also for my divisor, my dividend. Okay, when I move that one place value over, okay, it's going to give me 12. I know that one and two tenths is equal to 12 tenths. So even though we're moving these decimal points and all that stuff, we're still thinking about doing it in the same number. These are just not representing um, ones, these are representing tenths. So what I'm going to do, um, 2 can't go into 1, 2 can't go into 12, it goes in 6 times. 12 minus 12 gives me 0. I know that 1 and 2 tenths divided by 2 tenths is equal to 6. Okay, So I would say the quotient, let me scoot my little iPad um, cart back a little bit, the quotient would be greater than one point two because the answer is six. Okay? The quotient would be greater than 1.2 because the answer is 6. Okay? Alrighty, and so we're going to move on to our final problem here. Xander claims that for any decimal multiplied by 5 tenths, n will always be less than 5 tenths. Okay? So write one decimal that supports his claim and then write one decimal that does not support or refutes his claim. So what I'm going to be thinking about this is we're going to write one decimal. So I have, for example, okay, so for example, I'm sorry, I was just getting oriented over here, okay? So for example, if we have one decimal that supports his claim, we could do five tenths times, um, let's see, how about we do um, two tenths, okay? So five tenths times two tenths, okay? I could do this with standard algorithm, line it up, 0 0.5 times 0 0.2, okay? 5 times 10, or 5 times 2 gives me 10. I'm going to use an arrow, and I'm actually going to do my work over here. And I might even just do it on the um, on a sticky note on the back of my paper, or an index card. Okay? All right, so I have 5 tenths times 2 tenths, okay? I know that um, 2 times 5 gives me 10. Leave the 0, regroup the 1, okay? 2 times 0 plus 1 gives me 1, okay? Um, for that next one, I'm going to leave my 0. 0 times 5 is 0. 0 times 0 is 0, okay? And then we're going to have our 0 in that place value, our 1, and then our 0 right there. What I'm going to do now is using my um, skills with uh, decimal multiplication, I'm thinking about how many place values are to the right of that decimal. I have two in each one of those factors, so it's going to go one jump, two jumps, okay? And so that's one-tenth or ten-hundredths, okay? So one-tenth or ten-hundredths, okay? So that does support his claim that when we multiply the decimal um, by... Uh, 
five tenths that it is going to be a smaller product than five tenths. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to write a decimal that refutes his claim or does not support his claim. And so what I'm going to think about here is before I multiplied by a decimal that was less than one, I'm going to make a decimal that is just one tenth greater than one. So I'm going to do 0 0.5 or five tenths times one and one tenth, and we're gonna see what answer we get for um, our answer when we actually do our multiplication. So I'm also gonna use a, another index card, and if I can find one, I'm gonna use another index card, okay? All right, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do five tenths times 1.1, one one, okay? All right, one times five gives me five. One times zero gives me zero. I'm moving to the next place value. I leave that zero underneath the five. One times five gives me five again. One times zero gives me zero. Now I'm gonna be thinking about adding these up, okay? Five plus zero is five. Zero plus five is five. Okay, that zero um, is gonna drop all the way down. I have two place values to the right of my decimal point. I'm going one and two. Okay, and so that answer is going to be 55 hundredths, okay? So that's going to be 55 hundredths, and I know that 55 hundredths is going to be greater than 5 tenths, which is also equal to 50 hundredths, okay? So if we're thinking about his claim, right, if we multiply 5 tenths, times a number that is greater than one whole, it will give us a product that is larger than 5 tenths. If we multiply 5 tenths by a number that is smaller than one whole, okay, then it's going to give us an answer that is um, smaller than 5 tenths. So, alrighty, and that is all I have for you guys today. I appreciate you. I will move this up move this down okay so you can kind of continue to get your work down and i appreciate you thank you for bearing with me and listening and i'll let you get to it